like we've solved the problem. I got a new battery for basically nothing, but Brian swears it's not for nothing. Um, but it was basically, I just needed a new battery for my key fob, but my key fob has been broken forever. I called Honda. It's going to be $185 for a new key fob. So right now, I'm just going to manually lock my car. Even though I really do love the clicker, it's really nice. Instead of talking to them, why don't you talk to me? That's what I want to do. I was waiting for you to talk. Yeah. If you didn't notice the, so the empty space. Uh, well, did you check into third party key fobs? I can't. Honda is very specific. And why don't we just get a battery and then try to put that thing back together and see how, how it goes? I mean, that's an idea, but it's definitely wet in there. I got the key fob wet on accident. Well, now it's open. With so ocean it's... water. Yeah. Super, uh-oh. Yeah. Well, maybe we could just spray some WD-40 in there. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, I would, like, take a picture of that battery or mark the, the number down in case you lose it. And, uh, you know, if you just want to have one shipped, otherwise you might be able to find it at a Walmart or something like that. Is this still going? Maybe I should put this out now. Okay. I'm going to take it in the bathroom for me. But, you know, maybe I could play that Mayan reading for you. Okay, yeah, well, on I'm my here. phone. Some of it could go on your thing, but all 22 minutes of it could... You could just turn it off and listen to the rest of it. And, like, I think that that's a daily meditation thing for you because I made one for myself at years ago. And it's still on this computer, and I played it the other day. And it's like, wow, this shit's powerful. <laughs> but you should make it for yourself. But this is for, like, if you don't take the time to do it, and you said how much you loved my voice, so I wanted to do that for you. Thank you for your loving, kind of energy, Brian. <laughs> I'm still grumpy, dude. <laughs> How am I still grumpy? I just solved the problem, but I'm still, like, irritated. Because it's not the Because I got the battery, and then... It's not the surface thing that's happening right now. <sighs> There's it's... symbolism in this here. Like, what I'm looking at is, like, yes. my body is the car. And then my battery is my brain. Or my sexual organs, I don't know. <laughs> I don't the know. battery, like for the car, is like what gets the engine going in the first place. I'm just annoyed. But, you know, maybe it is about a disruption in your electromagnetic field. And maybe... The alarms are buzzing, waking me up from my sleep and affecting other people in negative ways. Here's the thing that's good about this. Is that you're starting to understand it on a quantum level. Because it's coming up. And it's like you're not making progress unless you're seeing the problems and how they arise. But I feel like this is also, like, I know this is weird, but I feel like this is also connected to, like, my battery being run out with me doing, like, the Playboy modeling and stuff like that. And, like, doing the goddess stuff that way. And, um, like, maybe learning to keep my sexual energy more sacred and for myself and my partner instead of like, yeah, like producing the content that I've been doing and like entering a new level. Like it used to bring me so much happiness and joy to like show off and to play in those ways. And it just isn't doing it for me anymore. Like, I mean, I... Okay, so the first part of it were all these positive statements. And then the second part of it was all these criticisms. Yeah. So it was like... Because I feel guilt and shame for, like, you, my sexual if energy. If you had just stopped right there, my, my grandmother and my mother would say, from your lips to God's ears. Mm. But then you can't say that about the you second part. You know, I didn't part. even notice what I was saying on the second part. Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, I blacked it out. I just dispelled all this negative energy, but I wasn't even fully conscious what was coming out. Yeah. I have, like, a lot of heartache about it. Uh -huh. An attachment to the story of it. 
And if you only see it as being connected to this circumstance in the moment right now, you're missing the root of it that goes way down deep. You know, there's like, so get comfortable with this feeling of un being uncomfortable. I feel like it has to do with like using the sexual energy for bad, like to get what I want or like to make money or like, okay. for like lower and level get stuff. get beyond the good and bad of it and realize that it's like, this is a pattern that's in humanity. It's not a personal thing. It's not just you. But for you to heal it in yourself is for you to heal it in humanity. That's the only way we're going to do it. I just watched this um, movie. Um, it's called Cam Girl. And, um, oh, okay. and it's like, it's basically about a cam girl, but it's also like a, um, like a horror movie, you know, like, mm -hmm. like uh, if you're an actual webcam model, they actually don't allow blood at all. And this girl, and like, they also don't like allow urine. And basically in every single time that she goes live, she says, Oh, sorry, I had to pee. Like she's always like making references in the subconscious of like mentioning uh, that. Yeah. And then, um, she promotes like, um, her character is like a lot like a, like little, like a little girl, like talking like that. Oh, that's combo. Oh, okay. I got burned. It's burned and then dragon's blood put into it. I took I took frog poison, twice. Oh. It was amazing. Oh wow. Yeah, I purged so much stuff. It was phenomenal. The first time I did the way better purge. Second one was more phlegm. You gotta take care of him. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you want to follow me over okay. there? I don't mind. I'm just like, I, you're right, like I keep judging the whole circumstance and I'm just like not sure. The, the judgment gets in the way of transforming everything. But I definitely feel like what you're saying that I am in a sense of transformation, that like as I age and I guess quote deteriorate, like there's a part of me that realizes that I can't be like that kind of like model forever. So maybe I have to like let go of my attachments of like attention and appreciation. Well, that's just the transitory nature of things, but, um, for women, I think <laughs> for everything, but, um, I mean like the body and youth are fleeting. So, you know, at least you really relished in it. Yeah. But it's and the weird. thing is when, when you're enlightened, you kind of like get beyond time. So you're not just in this space of, I mean, you want to be more focused in the now, not spending time <clears throat> thinking about the future and the past because like, in truth, there is no time. I mean, I know it sounds like well, it just weirds me out how like bullshit, it but... used to make me feel one way. And, like, I used to feel good doing it, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. And, like, I like I felt like there was a payback, and not just financially, just, like, the energy-wise. Mm -hmm. And now, like you're saying, like, it feels like it's more deeper rooted, and that it's causing, like, a more ripple effect on a quantum level that doesn't serve everybody. It's all everybody. the same energy, but when you take it to the next level, of it will become something different. It's all, like, all that sexual energy, the kundalini energy, is, like, um... The primal force that animates all life. So, um, you know, and I guess it kind of works with the prana. So, you know, it's the, is it the Ida and the Pingali or whatever? Ida and Pingali, yeah. So, you can't deny it what it is. And in that root space, I mean, this is, this is Tantra where you're just fully accepting everything as it is. And so you're not judging this whole like sexuality aspect of it, and don't make it a personal thing because what it feels you're... so personal. Like my personal sexual energy isn't what it was before either. Like like I'm it not. It feels personal. That's why I've you changed. have to try to make it not personal. That's that's what the the thing is to understand that you're a part of the transformation yourself. And your transformation is the world's transformation. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm just a little confused because, like, when I would dress certain ways, like, I would feel all this exuberant sexual energy. And now when I dress that same way, like, I don't feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Because it's you, not the clothes. Because you are different now. But the clothes used to also encourage that kind of, like, energy, it feels like. Well, because it's all tied into that root stuff. Root chakra? Yeah. Not sacral? So, well, 
Um, I suppose if that is more in um, like the sense of security beyond survival, I'm not really sure how it breaks down for you. Oh, I see. But we're talking the, oh, the oh, lower okay. stuff. So something that I thought about um, from watching that movie that I watched last night with my brother, the Cam Girl movie, um, I feel like because I was so used to like being in front of the camera, mm-hmm. that like 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 part of me almost has like a psychological disease that I have to like constantly be seen and constantly have this certain attention from being in the public eye for so much, and like part of me like once I notice that it makes me just want to like basically disappear like from my fan base and everything you know yeah. but I had worked so hard mm-hmm. in my youth to build like the following that I have. This is like ego. It's total ego. So my feeling is that it would serve you well to be in a place where you're so detached from it that you don't need it and that you don't necessarily care about it for you, but you've depersonalized what you've been through and you realize you have something to share with the world. So now it can be what you've been doing can be a service to others so that people can understand the arc of your enlightenment so that they can see your evolution so they can relate to it and see theirs. I feel like that's happening and then sometimes I feel like I'm overexposing but also at the same time like I kind of like documenting like you're saying like you can watch the transition you can see like where I came from this one level of energy and being this way in the media or in TV or whatever, and then transitioning into this up, like this higher state of evolution or enlightenment, as you call it. You're ready. You're ready to do a TED talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, I don't the, even know if I could do that. The, well, okay, but if you think of it that way, that your story has an arc and an ending that like helps the world. The TED talk is a metaphor. Um. But it could be a real thing. If you really integrate what you're going through, what you've been through, and I'm what totally your potential is. I'm totally to grasp is. the whole thing. I, I can see that I'm in a period of transition. and But, like, I've fluctuated from this state so many times, to be honest. But this is the most extreme. You're Pisces, been. right? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Well, you finally got to fucking go through that hole. <laughs> As a fish? Well, um... I mean, I don't mean it like that. I, I think of Pisces as, yeah. Um, what do you mean you finally go through that hole then? It's sort of like you live at the portal, at the edge of a portal of a transformation into Aries. Or, you know, from kind of the seed into the sprout, if you will. So you're kind of becoming a seed. And really, for the seed, the portal is going back into the earth and going through the cycle of gestation. And so maybe you've just been hovering and not really being willing. But mythologically, in a sense, like Saturn, which is your worldly experience, is pushing you down into the earth so that you can become your essential it's hardening you. That's a seed that they, that term that they use for seeds, you know. And all these elements have to be right for you to come into like being a sprout <laughs> to make the next evolution, basically. Well, yeah, you would be transformed into a new. And I, it's hard to like let all those pieces die. Like I literally put like fifteen years of my life into modeling and production. But I mean, it's just transforming them. They're not dying. They're becoming something different, very different. Because instead of it being like a self-serving thing, um, all the way up to here now, it can seamlessly transform into something that serves humanity. With, if you're in the right consciousness, if you understand how you are serving spirit, you know, it's like you're the goddess when you serve the goddess spirit. You're the channel for that. And, you know, it's... It's filled with conditioning. 
like like the girl aspect of like wearing dresses and high heels and and putting wearing things that's that all shape worldly your stuff oh, and that's goodness. all that's all a cultural thing that is like Alice Bailey wrote a book glamour a world problem you know she had a lot of other things that she was writing about because you know channeling all this higher stuff but this like turns out to be something well there's this whole thing people will be like oh look at that next new fancy thing what if it's on me you know and ultimately the emperor's new clothes you know, have you heard of that one? No, no. I know that he's like ends up naked or whatever. It's all the people around him telling him how good he looks in these new clothes that basically the people close to him said, like, well, we're never going to get a set of clothes that is going to really make him look good. So let's just tell him that he's wearing them already. You know, like, if we tell them that we see them and only the smartest people see them, then he'll see it, too. And they, you know, it's like we're all, we all so they have make him the, love his naked body or something like that? No, it's more like they dupe him into believing that he's got something on when he's got nothing on. And, like, in a sense, it's like, oh, yeah, you're wearing fashion and it makes you look beautiful. Mostly because you've been told that that makes you look beautiful. And guess what the fashions are this year now? Because last year's fashions don't make you look beautiful. I wonder why. <sighs> why is that? You know, and it serves them to have this whole... And the Who's whole them? world. Them being the people that are exploiting the people who are buying into this shit. Mm. Yeah. They're exploiting them. They know it. People are going to go for this. And some of them, I mean, really, it's innocently. They're just designers. They want to make cool-looking shit. I don't have a problem with that. Let's all have beautiful clothes, but let's not control people by that and exploit them and have this big industry where there's all kinds of unspeakable, horrible things done to exploit women, Children in sweatshops, models, you know, um, who maybe kind of agree with the exploitation, you know. So consciously, you know, indoctrinated. At least, right. Maybe they don't see it for what it really is. They're, they're going along because it serves them to get exposure, to have a career, to have money. You can only and imagine. And it all just goes on and on. And then all young women see that and they try to emulate it and they're all in this big system oh it's so true like sometimes like i'll see another model doing like what i used to do and then my ego's like i could do that still yep and then it like wants to play in those ways and it remembers all of that attention and all that good energy that was just like food so you know the mindfulness is so important in all of that not to get sucked into it and as you start to uncover and see all this stuff that like mindfulness will uncover it starts to make you sick to your stomach how unconscious we all are you know it's just like oh my god so it's a gift to be simple it's a gift to be free mm -hmm. I think you're doing so good. Me or Michael? Both of you, but I meant you. <laughs> Michael is doing good. <laughs> Such a good boy. Should I make some food? Such Are you hungry? I am kind of hungry, but I'm very picky in what I'm eating right now. Oh. I just did, like I said, I just did this combo cleanse, so I'm like being very, very, very selective what I take in. All right. Well, I mean, if I have something that you would like. Right on. Uh, you can have it, but I was going to uh, either make him oatmeal or I was going to make us all like that potato thing I had last time. But, you know, that's a lot of work. If you're not going to eat it, I'm not going to do it. Right. Yeah, I'll pass on that right now. Okay. Um, I actually kind of want to go home and make some eggs and stuff. 
Well, yeah, that's what and I was going to do. I got eggs, but yeah, if you want to go home, that's cool. Um, I thought we were going to sit and listen to, you know, what I made for I'm you. I'm down to do that as well. Check it out, uh, at least for a little bit. Like I say, I don't think, you know, but you could be film on film. Or I could just listen to it. I yeah. mean, unless you want me to share it. You're welcome to share it. It's a private um, it's for me. video. It's yeah. for you. It's not. Okay. I'll keep it private. But you then. can share the link. I don't care. I hear you. I don't, I don't really I'll just, care. I'll save it I mean, me. I might make a whole bunch of them, but like there's so many in the Mayan calendar of all these different types. And we're both double rhythmic, double red, double red rhythmic moon for you. I'm double red rhythmic um, dragon, double red dragon. And um, Shelby is like double red rhythmic serpent. And it's like, this is not just a coincidence. I'm a red moon. Yeah, huh. double red. And the double red is just kind of like when you kind of add, add all that up, that's, that's what becomes very, very clear our alignment and that it's not just a coincidence, you know. And yeah. I mean, I might be projecting here, who knows, but I, I would much rather project this. And, you know, it, it sort of reaffirms the connection that I feel with you guys and with other people because I've seen other did double Did you not red. become a minister? Why do I think that you became a minister? You never did that officially? You just taught me all that stuff that you did with the books? I was maybe like on that path, but in, in, a, in a sense, it was like when when I was doing So what do you that, consider what you do? Are you a counselor to people? Or like, what is this called that you're doing? That's a good question. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to be space. who I am, essentially. Right. Um, I am just a seeker on the path who's kind of read a lot and exposed himself to a lot and just draw, I drew in everything I could. The and secret this is just the result of it. And it's like, if, well, I got Mercury at the Midheaven and I got um, some Pluto and there's all these elements that, and, and the ninth house stuff that I go in on and I don't know Sag what any rising. Of this means. Well, it's all pointing Sarah to does. like past lives of like higher learning. Um, and spirituality, um, esoteric stuff, uh, even like I believe that I was a student of the Hermetic School. What and is the Hermetic School? That's like ancient um, knowledge of um, Hermes, and I think it also teaches um, the. Um, well, basically the Egyptians and like all this esoteric knowledge that might have been embodied in the um, the Library of Alexandria. And when I had a, a reading with... Um, you Jeff, know they raided that and burned that library? And then yeah, they, that's what I was about to tell and you. And I'm pretty sure that they brought it to like the Vatican or something like that. They brought some of the... This is what I'm trying to tell you. Jeff Green, who wrote the books about Pluto and evolutionary astrology gave me an an astrological reading i mean i paid for it but i have it somewhere it might even be on that machine somewhere in two past lives i was the head librarian at alexandria <laughs> and both times was when it was sacked not just once but twice yeah and that's why i'm sort of like feeling defeated you know like under the gun kind of like but it's like i've been in the crucible for something and it's like i don't need a library on the quantum level it's like in the past like during those times this knowledge was like not widespread to people um i guess cosmically we didn't really have access to it because we had been kind of descending into the darkness and really it was sort of like isis and the sacred flame and the whole idea of the goddess 
was really what we were protecting. And it wasn't all of those books and all that knowledge. And how and, funny is it that, like, America has ruined that? Like, ruined all the family essences and, like... Well, you're kind of missing the, um... The symbolism of the phoenix. Rising from the burning ashes? It's... It's purification by fire, baby. And, um... It's, it's why, like, in a sense, like, I do call out when I see injustice and stuff, but I fear no evil. I mean, I know dark times are coming, but it's only because we have to go through it to get into the light. It's like going through that portal. It's like a black hole where you get torn apart and you have no idea what's going to happen after that. I'm still, like, freaking out that I got a new battery and all I needed to do was pull up a key fob thing. Ridiculousness. So, well, maybe because you're just still attached, too attached to the money. You don't see it as a flow thing. But it's like, here's the thing. Your battery is a primary thing. Without that battery, you can't start your car. Tell me all the other things you can't do if you can't get your car started. Right. I can't go to work. I can't go to Are you going to wait for it to die before you replace it? No. How much is it going to cost you to replace it anyway when it does die, plus the hassle? You win. You win. It's just logic. You just have to see it differently. All right. Come on. Let's make you some breakfast, kid. <laughs>